I'd like to welcome you to a, a video with our YouTube channel from the Friends of the North Brookfield Townhouse. And today um, we are doing an interview with Robin Reynolds, a local artist and a person known around town for being involved with her children and with the local cultural council. So Robin, I'm really glad to be here with you today. and. Um, uh, we've got a few questions to ask you, and uh, hopefully we'll have a great interview and a chance to see some of your work. Okay, well thank you, Eva, so much for asking me. I appreciate it. Uh, the, the reason we wanted to do this is to promote some of the wonderful things that you're doing, and I know that artists in a small town very often don't have a chance to promote over a, over a film like this can mm -hmm. and what it can do definitely so how um tell us a little bit about yourself to begin with sure so i have been painting since i can remember since i was a little kid um, my mom started me in art classes in third grade in this woman's um basement and i've been painting ever since then in high school i was really involved um, I went to a really large high school, Brockton High, and, um, and started painting and decided not to go to art school at that point, but to go to a more traditional school and went to Kobe College and was an art and economics major. Um, always doing studio art, but always fearful of really not being able to, um, to make it as an artist. So I kind of had that fallback, although I did not really enjoy economics. So I, um, I kind of pushed forward and realized sooner or later that I really did just want to pursue art and decided to, um, that I didn't have enough background as a painter to get into graduate school, which was my ultimate goal at that point. So I went back to mass art and um, got to just take art classes, which was awesome. And I really got to experiment more at Mass Art and was using everything from metal wire to nails and started doing sculpture actually instead of painting, even though I was a painting major and was using hay, reeds, rope and dirt and was making these big constructions. They were like six feet tall and they were, they were great. And I thought that's, you know, what I was going to continue to do. But I decided, I met my husband, my soon to be husband when I was in art school and we decided to go to Hawaii for a little while. And so in Hawaii it really wasn't um, very smart to make these big sculptures. So I started painting outside again, which actually, I'm just going to backtrack a little. I started, I painted outside only once before then. It was at Colby when my teacher gave us an assignment to, um, to go outdoors and do a plein air painting. And I'll never forget that. It was like this big, huge moment where all my senses were heightened and I just loved it. And so I always remembered that and decided that um, that's what I was going to do when I was in Hawaii. So I started plein air painting then and really haven't stopped since that point. Um, I ended up going to grad school finally and I went to Savannah College of Art and Design where I got to paint outside all year round, which was a huge plus, and started painting um, at this wildlife refuge, which was so beautiful. It was, funny story, so in Savannah they have, um, there was all this big moat around um it was like a five mile radius and i remember getting out of my car and there's alligators everywhere and you know someone from up in massachusetts who's never really been around alligators i'm like uh oh but they didn't really bother you and you know so slowly i was comfortable painting next to the alligators and um but i was doing like these distant kind of vista views and I really like those and I remember when I came back here I would you know take so long to go find that perfect view and in fact what I've been painting now is you know right in my backyard which you know of course has been there all the time but I think what changed is I went in the middle of going to SCAD 
I went to Stonington, Maine to study under um, a dear friend, colleague, and mentor, John Imber, who has since passed from ALS. Um, but he, he was probably my biggest influence. And I started painting up in Maine, outside, and up there is when I first started um, doing much um, closer up views of things and looking down into into water and kind of blowing things up. And I've kind of kept to that same thought process to this day. I, I blow things up and kind of look around and, and do um, either look down or look through things. So that was really impactful. And then I ended up um, after grad school moving out to North Brookfield started raising a family and my art career kind of slowed a little bit um, because I had three children. But I always continued um, painting, even if it was just a couple days a week. I had daycare, thank goodness, and um, and I continued to paint. And now my kids are are pretty self-sufficient and, and grown and, and so it's kind of come full circle. And um, now I paint outside in my in my backyard, in my garden and really i mean my whole goal every day is how much time can i can i paint so well you know as you're telling this story i i look around the room that we're in right now and i see the examples of this this wonderful view of a unique view of nature and the things that are are wild and wonderful uh -huh. and i i just it, it, it's so exciting to me. I remember coming into this room a long time ago when we were teaching your children to do music and I would say, there's so much color. There's so many ideas. How does she see what she sees? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the most impressive part of, of what you do. I also know that you do a lot of shows too or mm -hmm. I, I get invitations to mm -hmm. go to different places. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing sure. professionally? Yeah. So um, once I finished graduate school, I was lucky enough to start showing pretty quickly. Um, I have a gallery in Boston called Soprafina Gallery. It's in the Sowa district um, on Harrison Ave. And I've been showing there for almost 20 years. Um, and then I also have a gallery in Stonington, Maine, who shows my work, G. Watson Gallery. And the last, well, last year I started with another gallery up in Maine, um, Cynthia Winnings Gallery in Blue Hill, Maine, which is a really wonderful gallery space. She shows some, some great painters. And so I think that was a really good fit. She kind of kept pushing for me and pushing for me and... I had other obligations, but I, I'm so glad that I, I um, started showing with her. And I'm very involved with Arts Worcester, which is a great organization and space. They they finally got a new space a couple years ago um, on, um, I can't think of the name of the street, in downtown Worcester. This beautiful space, and I was lucky enough to have a one-person show there two years ago when the space first opened. But they do some fabulous shows. and. Um, some workshops and really great if you've never been involved and want to it's it's wonderful and right now I'm also involved in what's called um, Crit Lab which is a kind of like an extended graduate level critique um, workshop that meets once a, once every month twice a month actually for five months and this woman Patricia Miranda leads that out of New York. It's virtual right now, but hopefully we'll meet in person and that offers um, opportunities to show as well. I'm in a show right now at Map Space, which is in New York, um, a show called Intimacies. And actually in the future, I just, got, I just found out that I'm gonna be in a two-person show with another local wonderful artist named Emily San, Sandegada at Worcester Center for Crafts in February. So That's I have a, a lot of stuff going on right now. Well, I'm, Lots of work. I'm really excited to hear about all of these wonderful opportunities you're getting because um, 
I, I forgot two more things that I, I really <laughs> want to mention. Um, actually, uh, another thing, um, um, in Juniper Rag Magazine, just brag here, um, <laughs> but uh, this woman, um, two women, Payal and um, Michelle May, started this great um, magazine. It's international, artists from all over. They are out of Rutland, out of Paxton, though, and have started this beautiful magazine and I am in it for the second time. And so that is, be it's beautifully laid out. And um, yeah, so. How can we find this, this magazine? Do we, where would it be available? So it's available in some places in, um, in downtown Worcester, um, in like the bookshop, I can't remember the name of the bookshop, um, in, in some of the places down there, but you could go to juniperrad.com and always order it yeah. online and see see it online as well. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, maybe we can just wind up with taking a look at your paintings. And if you have any comments as, as um, we pan the room, mm -hmm. you might be able to point out something in particular that inspired you when you did it. Or, sure. You know, just let's go through this and see how that works. Um, so most of the paintings are done in my backyard, like I said. They're close-up views. I kind of hone in on one thing, but my eye might might move around um, because they're painted in the course of three to five sittings, so things kind of die. And, and so my eye might wander or the painting might need something that's not necessarily there. Um, there's different marks on the paintings that, because I can do whatever I want to the painting, so I kind of embellish where I want, in, you know, to make it about the painting more than what's in front of me, so. Now, when you do this, is this uh, considered, like, abstract painting is, is one name, but what would you, you know, is so, there a way to categorize this? I always say my work is kind of a juxtaposition between um, abstract and representation. I mean, I guess I know what I'm looking at, but... Um, With your eye. Yeah, but... <laughs> that unique you, I think you do get a sense... You definitely get a sense of nature, and, and sometimes the flowers are more in your... kind of in your face, and, and you know it's a flower, and other times... They're kind of discombobulated and and taken apart, and so it's kind of up to the viewer to see what they want to see. I just had some people here um, buying one, and they were like, "This is a waterfall, and this is this," and no, it wasn't, but that's okay. <laughs> I like when people see. It's all about what you want to bring to it. the to the painting, and mm -hmm. I that's what I enjoy. So now, do they? Do you sometimes have? people who come in and ask you for a specific kind of painting with particular color? Um, not really, because not really. I'm just, just going to paint what I want to paint and hopefully right. they can find, you something know, something that they... Once you've already done. Exactly. Great. I'm out Great. there first to really kind of please myself, I guess. So <laughs> that's why I do it. So. Well, I think, that's, I think that's what artists usually do because mm -hmm. you're, you have your unique voice to speak about whatever it is that you have in mind. And um, we're grateful that you've taken time to um, make this video for us. And I hope the people of North Brookfield and, and the Brookfield region will be able to, to see what, what a jewel of a person we have right here in, Thank you so in much. the world of art. Thank you so much Thank for you, doing Eva. This. It was a pleasure and I'm glad that I could share my artwork with you, so thanks.